Paris right now is being destroyed by bedbugs. October 2023. My social media feed was crawling, pardon the pun, with videos like these. There is bed bugs and the bed is filthy. You're looking at a bed bug infestation in Paris and London. Closer to home, this was reported in South Korea. And, well, not as frightening, infestation fears prompted Hong Kongers to take precautions against the pesky bloodsuckers. <clears throat> now, bed bugs are oval shaped reddish brown insects about the size of this an apple seed. And when they're younger, they're even tinier and look almost transparent, making them impossible to spot. Their favorite meal, the blood of a warm-blooded animal, like you and me. So if you wake up to find clusters of itchy bites on your skin, like these, you know you're sleeping with these uninvited guests. Now, a bed bug bite can be excessively itchy and even cause insomnia. So far, we haven't seen reports of a major bed bug infestation here in Singapore. But does that mean our beds are completely safe from the threat of an invasion from these little critters? In this episode, I want to find out how we can prevent bed bugs and if that's all we need to worry about. To begin my investigation, I'm going hunting with Gurjeet Singh Gill, a pest buster. And in his decade-long work, he's seen an average of about 20 bed bug cases a month in Singapore. Wow, you've got so many pieces of equipment here. We got our sprayer, okay. and we also got our mister, and off we go. All right, let's get to it. Got some live bed bugs, especially just for you. Oh, oh, it's moving. You no know, worries. <laughs> they are all safe here. So now I need to figure out how do we inspect and get rid of them. We begin with a visual inspection. What we can see, all these crevices, as you can see, they normally hide all the way inside because they don't want to be seen, especially in the day. And then um, the most, the most common ones are actually at the corners of the bed. So if you have a look at this, you want to flip this out. And they will normally, if it's infested, be all inside here. And then when you're fast asleep, they normally come out and suck your blood. Wow, OK. So these bed bug infestations, uh, how do they begin? So the recent rise of bed bug infestation actually is mainly due to travel. Everyone has been crossing the borders. Bed bugs has been around for the longest of time, but now recently has come to light. Everyone, because of the whole outbreak. What are some precautions we can take to make sure that doesn't happen? After you travel, once you're back home, remove everything. What you want to do is straight away put them for washing with hot water and heater, above 50 degrees. So in Singapore, are we seeing a similar resurgence of bed bugs? Um, there is a slight increase. But here in Singapore, actually, we do a really good job with sanitization. So we don't really have to worry that much. But due to the humidity, right, we shed a lot of dead skins on our bed. So bed cleaning is also very important because there might be an issue of dust mites. Ah, so it's not just bed bugs. I have to worry about dust mites. Yes, yes, of course, which are way smaller. Bed bugs can hide in our clothes and suitcases, and we can unknowingly carry them back with us to Singapore from overseas. But because people here are generally taking preventive measures, such as washing clothing and cleaning their luggage immediately after travel, the risk of a major infestation here is low. So while we may be safe from a bed bug invasion, we still have to worry about the even tinier dust mites, which thrive in hot and humid environments just like ours. I'm meeting with three families across Singapore. Jocelyn Ng lives in a three-room flat at Bukit Perme in South Singapore. 
Karuna Murli Kemlani lives in a five-room flat at Jalan Damai in the eastern part of the island. Finally, Tish and Aaron Ko at Farah Park in central Singapore. They live in a three-room flat. So Jocelyn, in this room specifically, who sleeps here? Uh, my husband and myself. My four-month-old sleeps here and then my three-year-old son, Shrey and my husband, and together with me. We both sleep on the bed without mm. the dog. And so how often do you change the sheets and clean the mattress? Once a month when my weekly part-time cleaner changes the sheets. So our instructions to her is when you change the sheets, you clean the mattress with a vacuum that we have. Once a month. Once a month and that involves changing the sheets, washing the sheets, but anything else? Nothing. We have not touched this mattress since we moved in and got married. <laughs> and how long ago was that? Four years Four ago. Years. <laughs> Not at all? No. Okay, but do you change the sheets often? Yes, of course. So we actually change the sheets weekly. That's our cleaning routine. How about the pillows? Do you clean the pillows, sun them? We don't sun them, we don't clean the pillows, we just change the pillow covers and off we go. The pillow falls off a bit, like it dusts it off. But then, you know, if it's on the floor for too long, I'll just leave it aside and change the pillowcase. Okay, so what is too long for you? Um, anything more than a minute. It's not just change the sheets, he'll like strip the pillow, wash that sheet, hold up that pillow and then use our disinfectant gun to like spray it down with alcohol. You have a disinfectant gun? Yeah, we do. I don't clean the pillows okay. and the bolsters. They have protectors, this anti-dust mic okay. protectors. So I have that and then I wash it like every three months. For you and your husband, is this clean enough? Not exactly, but given the time and the energy constraint, we just accept it. I sleep in it every night, so I hope so. I assume it's clean? I guess we'll It is clean, it is clean! <laughs> find out, we'll find out. So I'm turning to these guys from STATS Research Lab for help. They'll be taking swab samples from the mattresses and pillows of our three families and sending them for testing. So we can see exactly what's lurking in them. And since I'm in the process of moving house, I thought why not also get them to test my 10-year-old mattress and pillow? I am curious to find out what might be hiding in there. As a control, we will also test samples from a brand new mattress. The results will be out in a week. And oh my, Karuna, I feel the, the pain, the most miraculous result. How is that possible? I usually change my sheets once or twice a week, like Karuna who I met earlier. The other families that I met said they change their sheets either fortnightly or once a month. I also asked you on social media about how often you change your sheets. More than 500 viewers responded. 23% said they changed their sheets weekly. Most, about a third, said they did so once a fortnight. The same number did so once a month while 16% said they changed their sheets only once every two to three months. Dr. Stephanie Ho has helped thousands of people take care of their skin. But why am I visiting a skin specialist? Well, that's because our skin is our largest organ and comes in contact to our bed sheets all night long. As a general guidance, I think we should be changing the, our bed linens every week, at a minimum every two weeks. So by doing a regular hot wash, we're able to remove sweat, body oils and dead skin cells that we shed every day. So what you might not know is that dead skin cells are actually food for house dust mites that are found within our bedding. So you mentioned hot wash. How hot must that wash be? I think we, you should be aiming for 60 degrees Celsius to kill off all bacteria, viruses and fungus. So 30% of our respondents said they change their bed linen monthly and 16% even said they do it only once every two to three months. What's the risk there? 
If we've got cuts and wounds on our skin, if we've got active rashes, if we've got active acne, these are all areas that can become infected very easily. Also for patients with allergies and sensitive skin, uh, they may develop allergic symptoms such as itchy eczema patches. So I think there is some risk involved. So if I don't have any active wounds or rashes, do I still have to change my sheets every week? Well, it's a little bit like, are you going to wear your clothes every day for a whole month? <laughs> so I think, yes, assuming you sleep eight hours a night. Um, after a week, you would have spent um, 56 hours with your bed sheets. After a month, you would have spent 240 hours in your bed sheets. So I think you can, you can imagine how much accumulation of sweat, oil, dust um, during that time and you're putting yourself at an increased risk of bacteria, fungi and yeast infections. It's been a week and the lab test results of our mattresses and pillows are out. And I'm taking them to Jocelyn, Karuna and Aaron. I've also brought in a nasal allergy specialist, Dr. David Chin, who will break down these results. All right, I have the results with me. Wow, so nervous. <laughs> Karuna's pillow had a bacteria count of 17,280 colony-forming units per swab. But her baby's pillow was even higher, at 64,500,000. Karuna's mattress had a score of 7,087. For Aaron and Tish, while the count of their pillow was relatively low at 9,440, their mattress hit 380,685. Jocelyn's pillow scored 1,360, while her mattress was at a moderate 37,600. As for my pillow, the count was at a high of 180,000, and my old to be discarded mattress had a significantly high score at 981 million. The new mattress, not surprisingly, had a low count at 800. Doctor, looking at these numbers here, anything significant that we should think about? Actually, there's bacteria everywhere. Every surface here, if you're going to swab it, you're going to find something. So as far as bacteria are concerned, it's, it's more the immune system, whether it's working properly or not. Generally, we all want to have lower numbers, right? The good news is that if your immune system is working properly in a healthy person, then it probably is not going to affect us very much. Let's go to mold. Similarly for mold, Karuna had a particularly high score for her baby's pillow at 1,030, while her mattress was at 46,483. Karuna, your pillow is less than the baby's. I feel the pain, right? <laughs> mold counts for Aaron and Tish's pillow were at a moderate 3,610 and a low 323 for their mattress. Jocelyn's pillow did even better at 25. Her mattress scored 968. As for my own, while my pillow was at 5,385, my mattress again scored a high of 316,562. The new mattress had a count of less than 10. I think with moles, again, this is your immune system. So again, it's, it's about the environment. And maybe with a baby pillow, you might be getting some drooling and things like that. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing if your child is healthy. All right, everyone ready to go for dust mites? Karuna, per 100 cm square, 0 0.2 dust mites. Aaron and Tish, 0 0.1. Jocelyn, 0 <laughs> dust mites. And I had 0 0.35. And a factory would be, of course, zero. I can see it on Jocelyn's face. Zero? Zero. Zero. <laughs> zero dust mites. How is that possible? So maybe for every one dust mite that you swapped, there could be a hundred or a thousand in the mattress, in the dust that's in the mattress. If you're washing your covers often enough, then the constant load of dust mites is just getting clean the way, but you never really get rid of it. That makes sense because moving house, my old mattress was left completely open without any cover. So that's why it's the highest, right? Exactly. So actually, my part-time cleaner is supposed to clean it with my vacuum every month when she changes our bed sheets. I suppose 
she's doing a good job. I agree here. And there's actually evidence in a couple of studies that shows that regular vacuuming of the mattress reduces the dust mite load. So we found four different types of mold in the mattresses, and I have them here. Are any of them significant on, that we need to look out for? Alternaria and aspergillus are associated with a number of uh, allergy conditions, especially aspergillus. They include allergic rhinitis, uh, but aspergillus can also cause allergic fungal sinusitis and allergic lung disease as well, which becomes chronic. Oh my. But the main actor in allergic rhinitis is dust mites. Then you get the typical symptoms, which are runny nose, sneezing, a blocked nose, sometimes watery eyes as well. So these, these are chronic. In Singapore, the main cause of uh, allergies here is dust mites. The dust mites are with us all the time, so our, our symptoms are there all the time. Sinusitis is sometimes more insidious. And allergic lung disease, uh, it's far more serious. It's coughing, constant mucus, it can go on for months and years. I have a sensitive nose, so if I go into a very dusty environment, I will tend to get sneezing fits. Are the mites causing this? The dust mites, uh, they actually produce fecal matter. So that's where we find the allergens. So what, what should I be doing if my allergies are getting worse despite regular mattress cleaning? If you're getting that sort of um, problem and you can't control it, we call that moderate or severe allergic rhinitis. And so we might need to start some medication and treatment for that. And what happens if I leave it completely untreated? For some people, a small proportion will go on to develop asthma. The nose gets progressively more blocked and they end up mouth breathing when they sleep and that predisposes to snoring and sleep apnea. In children, especially in the primary school age, if you have a blocked nose constantly, the jaw doesn't develop as it should. You get uh, a certain sort of face. It's called the adenoid face. So this can happen if the uh, allergy is not treated in the, the growing, the crucial growing age. My mattress, there's zero dust mite. Then how is it that my husband will still be like sneezing, um, yeah, on and off? I think the issue is in the way that this test it was done. Does it represent where the dust mites are? And I think to get the answer to that, we have to dig deeper into your mattress. This calls for another test. Earlier, we only swabbed the surface of the mattress. This time, we're going deep inside the mattresses. So I've discovered that our beds are hotbeds for bacteria, mold and dust mites that could cause chronic allergic conditions. But the problems go much deeper than the surface of our mattresses and pillows. So I'm going to have to tear this mattress apart to see what lies inside. Hey, che, che, it's okay. Don't need so dramatic. I have an easier way to get into the mattress. I knew that. Come, of let me course. show you. Fendi, just before we begin, since I have an allergy, I'm going to take a precaution and wear a mask, okay? This is a very typical spring mattress. Dust mites generally, they reside in the first few layers of foam. And over here, you have the spoon. Because it's hollow, it tends to trap dust. And in a mattress like this, with how thick it is, how deep can these dust mites actually go? Very deep. But generally speaking, dust mites, they will stay near the first few inches of the mattress because that is where you have um, body heat, you have food from your skin flakes, and then you have moisture from the air. So these are the things that dust mites require to reproduce. So inside this mattress, you, you're going to have generations of dust mites. I'm making my way back to Jocelyn, Karuna and Tisha's bedrooms. This time, I'm taking along Fendi and his team of professional mattress cleaners who will dig a bit deeper into their beds. OK, first step is um, I'll do a one-minute demo um, to show you exactly what comes out from the mattress. Ooh, so like a little test. I'm so nervous. <laughs> Exciting stuff. Ready? <laughs> I'm so scared, oh my god. <laughs> So what we have here 
This is the mattress rubbish. Lots of skin flakes, dust mites, dust mites excrements, loose fibres in the mattress, um, household dust. Mm. All these, um, over time, um, it accumulates inside the mattress. If you recall, Jocelyn's mattress had no evidence of dust mites for the earlier surface swab. But once we sucked out what's inside, it was a whole different story. Why this would be a big deal is when you sleep at night, when you toss and turn, any slight movement. Okay. <laughs> or this is kind of like, if you sleep with your air conditioning on mm. in an enclosed area, this kind of dust is microscopic. Mm. Eventually, it's going to find your way into your nose. Then that's where you have your allergic reactions. I see. Mm. Yeah. What we're looking at now, Fendi, would you say this is average for a test? Below average, above average? I would say this is uh, slightly above average. You don't even need to see and you will know. Let's open this up. Okay. Oh, wow. I think if this comes out after one minute, as much as it's going to sound so weird, I'm excited to see what happens after <laughs> the whole mattress is clean. So this amount of dust coming out after one minute, Fendi, would you say this is average? Below average, more than average? I would say this would be average. Oh, gross. Oh my god. So, Aaron and Tish, what are your thoughts on this? Um, it's a bit gross, but um, <laughs> I think it's expected since we haven't cleaned the mattress in a while. It's a while, it's four years, by the way. <laughs> okay, so Aaron and Tish, let's head outside and let the professionals take over and do a deep clean of the mattress. We're done. Do they have to do this very often to keep up the state of this uh, cleanliness in the mattress? Frequency of mattress cleaning really depends on the person using the mattress. Um, are they allergic to dust and dust mites? Do they have asthma? Do they have eczema? What kind of mattress this is? In fact, this mattress right here, this is a 100% latex mattress. Latex mattress tends to trap dust lesser compared to the usual mattress. Great. So what else can they do to make sure this state is kept up for as long as possible? Rotate the mattress every three to six months. I, I don't get it. Why, why must I rotate it? If you're always going to sleep on the same side, you're going to have lots of skin flakes, which is what the dust mites feed on. Mm. So by spreading out the areas that you sleep in, you're not going to have a very concentrated area of dust mites. When it comes to mattresses, Pocket spring types provide ideal conditions for dust mites to thrive. But a 100% latex mattress is dense and has very tight holes, leaving no space for dust mites to live. Believe it or not, 80% of Singaporeans are sensitive to dust mites. And while not everyone will show allergy symptoms, about half of them, including me, do worry. And I may never be able to get rid of all dust mites, but I will try to reduce my exposure. So, I'm choosing tightly woven bed sheets and inside an anti dust mite mattress protector. And, not forgetting the weekly vacuuming of the mattress, hopefully, I'll get better sleep. sleep.